Welcome to the Life Burst Podcast. I'm your host, Bill. With me today are Andrew and Tiffany, who have apparently lost their minds and let me take over the show for a moment. That's true. Yep, that's what we're doing today. There's also there's also uh, another friend with you, right? Oh, yes. And also joining us briefly for the start is Joseph, my nine-year-old son and premier training partner. Say hi, Joseph. Hello, my name is Joseph. Nice. My deck is No Limit, and I run the center of Piranha. I really like Andrew's step deck. Oh, well, thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, you probably... Did you, did you, did you play the, the tournament? No. We all, this was our first online event at all, so we yeah. only scraped together one setup, and also we had three kids' birthday parties that weekend that he was at, so... Ooh, yeah. busy time. That's a busy time. <laughs> but uh, he often takes second at our locals. Nice! <laughs> there you go! Well done! <laughs> So let's see. Uh, For those who have don't know me, which is pretty much everybody, um, I'm a father of three, Joseph being the oldest. Uh, I've got a seven-year-old daughter and then a baby girl in the house. Mm, That's a busy house. Uh, We live in the Birmingham, Alabama area. When I'm not playing card games, other hobbies include Dungeons and Dragons, board gaming, Cub Scouts, and Aikido. So speaking of games and fun times, what do you want to talk about today? We have a very special guest with us. It's true. It's true, Bill. You you happen to have gotten a pretty good placement, from my understanding, at the uh, the, the the latest We Cross tournament, the the ceremony, if you will. I, I think a pretty good placement might even be first place. <laughs> May have not happened to lose any games, um, which apparently makes you first place. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty solid track record coming out strong in the first North American ceremony. Congratulations. I still can't quite believe it's real. Uh, thank you. I totally didn't expect that. I think like everybody else, I was just aiming for top 64 to get that Urith Tama mat to flex at my locals. Yeah, but <laughs> now you can really flex at your locals. <laughs> so wait, does that mean by getting first, does that mean that you are getting both mats? Yeah, ho, ho. <laughs> you could take both with you and be like, "Hmm, which one do I want?" Yeah, to I would. Today? I would put down the top 60, 64, and then I would take out the sixteen. Put it on top. <laughs> put it on top. You know, I probably won't, only because my daughter plays Uchu, the seven year old. Oh. oh, well, see, your daughter knows what's up. That's that's clearly the answer to that. So, uh, so let's see. How did I end up in We Cross at all? Um, I. The first collectible card game I played was probably Magic the Gathering, which was, and yes, everybody nods, uh, that was in middle school, and I'm now going to date myself because when I learned it, you had to know sorcery, instant, and interrupt timing. Uh, uh, yep, yep, yep. And mana burn was still a thing. I was, I was there. I was probably younger than you at the time, though. I was in elementary school, but yeah. Uh, let's see. I, I like learning games. I'm... I like playing with rules. I like different systems. Um, so I've played Legends of the Five Rings. I've played some Hearthstone. I've dipped in and out of some more obscure games like Gods Unchained. There was a Star Wars trading card game, Eternal. I have played a little bit of both the Rifts trading card game and Serpent's Tongue. And if you know either of those, they're really obscure. That makes well, sense. Well, so what I'm what I'm hearing is that you you have a wide array of outside skills that you've brought over to to We Cross, which I I'm I'm making a judgment call here. I think your favorite team is probably uh, Diagram. Yeah, definitely. But I didn't originally pick them exactly. Uh, in February, there was a convention here in Birmingham called Kami Con, K A M I. And it was a general anime convention. And my daughter was at a dance competition. So she and mom and the baby went and did that all day. And so Joseph and I went to this anime convention. And we met Sarah Nicole Robles, who's a voice actress from Disney's Owl House. Um, Had a great time. And then on the schedule, there's this We Cross Card Game Teach. And we're like, we like learning new games. And yeah. our local shop, uh, Mythic Cards and Games, 
was hosting a one-hour teaching session, and then they followed it with a starter deck tournament. Hey, oh, buy deck, give everybody a random starter deck and run some Swiss rounds. And we'd originally been planning to go to the rock concert that night, but we had a couple of hours, so we got into the tournament. And about halfway through, it was time for the uh, rock concert, and I asked Joseph, hey, you know, we can stop if you want to and do the thing that you've been looking forward to that we planned. And he's like, no, I want to keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> and then so, we were hooked. <laughs> yeah, basically. So just randomly, I got handed a diagram deck, uh, and Joseph got handed a No Limit. And I'm looking through the cards, frantically trying to figure out in the 20 minutes that I, 10 minutes that I have before the first match, <laughs> how this works for a game I just learned. And I saw cards like Aconis and Germanium, Guy, uh, yeah. in the deck. And I just I want was to point like, out here quickly that Tiffany is now dying that you said Guy, <laughs> uh, since I like to also clearly pronounce my, uh, my el element <laughs> Signy the same way. Um, I'm just happy to they, know what that element is now. Thank yeah, you. We, got, we got a comment. There was germanium. <laughs> uh, so they cared how many colors were on field or what colors, multiple colors you were paying colorless enter with. And I'm like, I saw nothing like this in the teach. I got the weird rules interaction deck. That's awesome, but now I gotta learn it in a hurry. And then I drew and played and read No Bori Betsu, and I was like, oh goodness, what am I doing? Yeah, um, yeah. Weird Bear. I do love me some Weird Bear. <laughs> so we got hooked. We did well in the starter deck tournament in the starter deck tournament. Um Joseph got eighth and I got first. Um and out of twenty four, so that's pretty good for him as well. Yeah, we didn't yeah. go in Everybody was playing slow and late, and so we didn't go enough rounds to really get full standings. There were some tiebreakers in there. But then I got home, and we were talking about it a ton, and I convinced my wife to try it, uh, to play a game with me, just because Joseph and I were going to be talking about it a lot, because we were hooked. So I wanted her to un play a game so that she understood vaguely what we were talking about. And we oh, finished. Like and we finished the game. And uh, with the starter decks Joseph and I had brought home. And I asked her if she had any questions about it. And she said, so when does Mama get her own deck? <laughs> yes! We love it. We love to see it. So she uh, got card jockey. Nice. And that left my daughter picking up Uchu. She can actually, she can play and she can finish a game. Uh, That's not impressive. Not fast enough. Not fast enough for a tournament setting, but especially given that she's playing U2. Yeah. But when she Fenrir's and freezes your board, she's happy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm happy when I Fenrir and freeze a board, too. Yeah, it's a pretty fun time. It's relatable. <laughs> um, so then I played, I loved Diagram. I played Musica. I uh, played at the locals at Mythic. And then the event was coming up, the ceremony, and I managed to get a spot because people were posting it in multiple places that I saw. Uh, snuck in. Cleared with my wife that I could have that time. Mm. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, what deck am I going to play? I know I'm going to play Diagram because it's fun for me. Do I want to stick with Musica or do I want to switch to uh, the Madoka? We got two boxes of the set to uh, Changing Diva. Yeah. And we were cracking them as a family, so we set, we split them up and everybody got 10 packs to crack. And out of the two boxes, my daughter, the seven-year-old, opens the Diva Rare Madoka. <laughs> the universe keeps sending you signs, clearly. And yes. we also opened two Zirconium Oxides. And I was like, okay, clearly I'm playing <laughs> at least a bit a Madoka deck. So, basic deck selection, I'm going to be honest, I net deck. Uh, and so, for, if anybody's unfamiliar, net deck refers to the process of just, rather than building a deck list yourself from scratch and adding every card, you go to the internet, you look up a deck somebody else has used or posted or designed, and you copy it. Um, so, I tend to net deck and then tweak, right. adjust yeah, it for I myself. 
That, for the, that for does the... give you the best results, I feel. For like you personally as a player, as a as a person that wants to pilot a deck, but you kind of want to give it your own twist, something that you're more comfortable playing with. I mean, mad props to those who design their own decks from scratch. I'll do it once in a while um, for fun if I've got the time. But honestly, designing a deck from scratch and then testing it takes a ton of time. Oh, yeah. And I just mm-hmm. don't have that kind of time in my life for card games these days. I have three mm-hmm. kids. It's not. <laughs> and that's the part that I don't enjoy as much. So I'm focusing on the parts of the game that I really love doing, which is making like minor tweaks to the deck and then playing it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Sometimes net decking has a negative association for some people. And I think that's from people who copy a deck but don't understand it. They don't mm-hmm. think about why each card is in there. That's why I end up with it. Oh, and also, honestly, I don't have the money to shell out for every card in the set. Oh, 100%. For yeah. sure. I can't test everything. Uh, or, again, the time to print out a bajillion proxies. Yeah, literally our printer died from this set. We we had to get a new printer to to, to make it work. <laughs> I mean, in the printer's defense, it was not that great anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, what printer is? <laughs> So my core list was the uh, Madoka mid-range that you guys put out as a deck tech. Uh, Link quite possibly in the video description, depending yeah, on I, how... I, I, I can do that. I, and, and thank you, by the way, for, for the shout-out. I'm glad. I tested that deck quite a bit on my own, and it kept winning, and I kept being like, I think I might have stumbled onto something here, but... <laughs> I'm just one person, so I'll just keep, I'll just put it out. We're not exactly the one-stop shop for big brain <laughs> numbers, but we really appreciate that you, that you enjoyed the the deck and that you clearly got good use out of it. So did you, did you make any sort of like specific tweaks on your own that you felt worked better for you? Well, I did. And a couple of them were from a happy accident because, so the other thing that net decking did was let me play this deck at this event at all because there was not much time between set release and this event mm-hmm. it was like three weeks and i think we didn't i didn't see in the results we didn't see a ton of the new decks from the set mm-hmm. like there weren't a ton of akino centers there weren't a ton of dj lovitz there weren't a ton of madokas there were some but mm-hmm. i think part of that and i don't know if this affected anybody uh comment down below if this got to you was the time needed to put a deck together. Because if your local shop does not sell singles, and you're not yeah. just going to buy a play set as soon as the set comes out, and you're not going to proxy like everything, then what you basically had to do was design or pick a deck, order your singles, however mm-hmm. long that took you, mm-hmm. wait a week or more for them to come in, because shipping is nuts right now, yes. play it, And then if you don't make any tweaks with just the cards you happen to have on hand, then your next batch of single order after you've had a chance to place that may not make it in before the event. Oh, 100%. It's time to practice it. Yeah. So yeah, starting from that core deck list, we went on a family trip for spring break and I took some We Cross cards to sort in my downtime and in all the packing, I actually misplaced one of my packs of singles. And so Ooh. during a lot of my I didn't have a Chime of the Blessed Key and I mm-hmm. didn't have my fourth Zirconium Oxide. Mm-hmm. So I tested without that for a while, per force, while I was looking or seeing if I could like get another order in. And I learned a couple of things. Um, one was, I feel like four zirconium oxides is too many in the deck. Because you can never play more than one on it. You never want to play more than one on a turn because of the harm. It can be good turn three, but you might have to prioritize landling for the mill to force the refresh. So I'm often preferring landling on turn three, and sometimes I can't play both and do what else I want to do because of the limit. Hmm. Um, it's great turn four and after that my opponent might not have a hand to discard anymore Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes or i might have random drains in hand that don't do anything else um and now it's it's not good so and but given how much filtering the deck has to find the cards that it wants uh i felt like i was testing with three 
And I thought about proxying in a fourth one or something. And then I was like, I have it every time I want it. Yeah. Hmm. And once in a while when I don't. Because there's it's great for the deck. There's just not that many turns that it's great on. Sure. Right. So that was a bit of a happy accident. So I left it out even when I found my singles pack. <laughs> Never mind. Don't need this. Yeah, right. <laughs> it just fills the spot in my binder. Um, <laughs> I switched two key assume, the two key assumes for two more um, Gagiels. And I feel like Kiyosumi is a great card. It is a staple in my Musica deck. Yeah, because in Musica, for... it's only a three minus two K, because you can rearrange and take advantage of Musica's center. But in this deck, it wasn't helping with anything I wanted to do. It doesn't discard. It doesn't help me with removal. It's sticky, but it dodges removal a bit better, maybe, but I don't care mm -hmm. much Banishing my signies in battle because I'm filling my hand so I can refill those lanes pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I wanted more of the Gagiel effects because, again, I didn't have Chime of the Blessed Key. So I was like, I want more of that draw and discard to turn on Hijikata. Which, by the way, I'm diving in, assuming people know this deck. Uh, if you don't, go look at the deck tech and then you'll know the base. Um, so that left me needing to get in two more green enter somehow. Because, yeah, you need the green enter for your options on Sangha and Osagatsune. Mm -hmm. So I replaced my missing Zirconium Oxide with a Flopsy. Ooh, we love a Flopsy. Um, and I replaced one of the Neon Tetras, because Flopsy adds a life burst where there wasn't one. I replaced one of the Neon Tetras with a Water Buffalo which is the uh, blue-green vanilla. Mm -hmm. And it to be really useful. It didn't come up often, and there's only one of them in the deck, but it loves to sit in the enter zone and be green enter that cannot be removed by something like Mars or Phoenix, because it's not off-color. Because mm. it shares... So it's mm. green enter you can't target on their burn. Um... You'd asked about upgrades I might make to the deck in the future. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe. since we kind of like to track... We kind of like to track the uh, the Japanese meta, kind of like the S&P 500, if you will, mm -hmm. of We Cross, where we're kind of like looking ahead and trying to figure out like what how what the waves will affect us in our own meta. So have you looked forward into the other sets at all? You know, I glance forward a little out of interest, but I don't research them in detail or read every card. Um, I have you guys for that. Uh, well, you have me. T Tiffany doesn't yeah. do it all that much. Yeah, I just do nothing. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Look, I want to be clear about our relationship here. I, I, am, I build decks, but Tiffany is just a rock-solid player. Yeah, I just, I just play. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want any of my deck decks. <laughs> But no, I look forward to the set reviews uh, rather eagerly. Um, but just things in the deck that I think are ripe for upgrade. Uh, I think Neon Tetra could definitely stand an upgrade. We can get into it a bit more when I'm talking about the card flow of the deck and all, but I don't think Freeze is good in this deck. Mm. If there were a... Vanilla blue 5k with a solid life burst. I would run that instead mm. of Neon Tetra. But there isn't. Yep. There's no. That was what I was finding, and that's why I used Neon Tetra there. I was like, eh, there's, I gotta have a placeholder. Give me a blue level one with a solid life burst. And if it actually does something that I want to do, that's bonus. So that's a great place to replace. Mm. Uh, the Osagatsune Dark Energy Package, and I think those should definitely be seen as a package, does a thing the deck needs a little bit uh, to shore up its weakness in a long game, which is removing big things. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that it does it the best way. It's a little clunky to pull off. Um, if there were a good way to do that and maintain colors. Uh, Chime might be replaceable. If you're running four Gagiels like I do. 
It was useful sometimes. It sat in my Elrig deck some games and never came out. Uh, let's see. I played three No Limits, two card jockeys, including the final, and I had one, uh, all Lion and Hirana centers. Mm-hmm. And yep. I had one mirror match in that it was a Madoka deck. Ooh. Mm-hmm. But he was running the freeze package mm-hmm. um, instead. It was much more freeze control. I had, so two games of mine were quite close. And one of them was at Madoka Mirror. Mm-hmm. Because he got the discards going sooner. Mm-hmm. This deck has a lot of good discards, but a lot of them are combo based. Hijikata is a bad card by itself in a vacuum with nothing happening to support it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gagiel is not a great card if it's not supporting anything. Together, they're awesome. But when he, I, I started slow, he had a greedy start where he like only put one Signy down on his first turn. Oof. And then he shredded my hand. And for the first time, I got to experience not having enough cards to fill all my lanes. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, tough. Totally shredded me. I pivoted and became the beatdown and squeaked it out. But that was a close one. My other close game was actually round two. Um, I made what may have been a mistake and glanced at the stream and realized my table was being featured. So you can go. <laughs> you can see my round two game if you want to. Um, and I got the. That was the most nervous I was the whole tournament yeah. mm-hmm. because I was like. Oh my gosh, I didn't they were only gonna feature seven games. I didn't think I was gonna end up on the featured stream. You right? got featured twice. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the first one, and I'm like, oh gosh, don't let me make like a major mistake or people think I'm cheating or anything like that. And then what do I do? There's a bit in my turn three where I'm messing around with my enter and I'm moving stuff around, and the commentator's just silent because he didn't know what I was doing, I don't think. I did zirconium oxide. And I forced a discard, and then I went to enter charge off of Madoka, and I said, there's no way I should have this much enter. I didn't pay for my level three grow. (gasps) So I realized that I didn't pay for the enter for my level three grow. So I had to explain to my opponent what I had missed once I realized it, and then go back and figure out how that affected and what I could pay with, what had been an enter that turn, what did I pay with. And I think out of all of that, I still screwed it up and ended up with one more, ended up double enter charging by mistake. But thankfully, it didn't affect the game because I had that spare. I could could have floated that. I floated that enter the whole mm-hmm. game. Yeah, um, luckily, it's it's weird to say this, but the correct place to make any kind of mistake in one of these tournaments is the feature match because then you have several people watching as well as probably a judge and you can rewind the game if, in certain aspects. <laughs> well, so nobody caught that. They were all in on the fact that in among, nobody caught that except, you know, me and my opponent. It didn't get commented on stream. What got commented on stream was the fact that in all of that mess, I forgot to down Musica for playing Zirconium Oxide. <laughs> <laughs> See, I they were all like, and that was easy to fix, obviously, because I only played one of them. So it was just, oh, I turned music yeah, aside. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's I so funny like, to me because we I had just like talked harmony. about in our like last. Sorry to interrupt. We had just talked about this in our last podcast that like this game is actually quite hard to track, and it just happens to everybody. Where like you're going to be in the middle of a game, and you're like, oh mm-hmm. wait, hold on, what's going on? <laughs> so it's 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 nice to kind of hear that like. You you can still be a first place player. You can be a commentator. You can be watching the stream, and sometimes things just get missed. It happens. Uh, amen. You do not have to be perfect to play this game. Um, no, sir. <laughs> let me be proof. Um, if that helps, uh, let me be proof. <laughs> I do like for that reason, though. I do like harmony effects in diagram because you don't care about downing your assists. Downing your assist does nothing except pay for harmony. So you're mm-hmm. never competing with other effects, unlike something like Card Jockey or uh, No Limit, which have to think about, can I afford to play this harmony this turn, or do I need to do my, like, once per game fun? Ah. Right. 
Um, let's see. So those were my two close games. I didn't run into any Uchu, and I was glad for it because I haven't run into any Uchu at my locals, and the Uchu player in my house is seven, so I don't have what I feel is like good competitive level <laughs> practice uh, against Uchu. So I've got no idea how that matchup is because I haven't played it much. I I think if I was going to be honest with you, I would say that Uchu is probably in your favor, and the main reason why is because Senga Lancer twice a game is ridiculously strong. You just break walls. Uh, I will say, I feel like the comments, everything I said earlier about why it was difficult to put together a new Changing Diva deck for this event, I think also affected people's practice. And again, say down in comments if this was you, but I had multiple opponents that I feel just didn't know the, what I was doing. And so they misplayed mm -hmm. because they had no idea what I was doing. And I feel like I had a chance to practice because for the same reason that nobody had built these decks, if nobody at your locals has built these decks, you haven't practiced against them. Um, my round two game, like, he had a line of play on turn three where he maybe outright won the game there if things aligned well, which they didn't. And then he had the opportunity to top deck off of a Folklore Life burst, and he needed to top deck a Servant. And he didn't. But if he did, he probably wins. Uh, I had an opponent who, like, right at the start of the game, had two Deafening Inferno life bursts that had no target. Mm -hmm. Because of when they come up. Like, I played well, clearly, to get that far. But I feel like there were other players who could have also gotten the top spot if luck had gone differently. So, yeah, I don't I want agree. to pretend like I'm somehow the best player that was there. And there's people who didn't even make the tournament because they didn't make the sign up or they weren't available that day. Uh, part, so part of part of the fun, though, of this game is that games can go wild and not in a weird Hearthstone way. Right? You've played Hearthstone before, too, yeah. where Hearthstone has this RNG that like they it's it's a very prevalent part of the game and you've got to lean into it to try to get. And so there are games that you're like, don't really require all that much skill to, to win. And the RNG happens. This has RNG, but it's equal amount of RNG on both sides of the field because in the form of usually life bursts, um, because you have the same amount of life bursts in each deck. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to talk through how I play this deck turn by turn. So when you start the game with this deck, first of all, I stack my Elrig deck a certain way. Um, I have, as we'll talk through, I have a particular order that if things are going the way I want them to, that I want to play my Elrigs in. And so I stack the deck that way, partially so I can find them easily and don't have to distract myself thinking about it, but also because it's a forced reminder to myself, hey, normally you'd play this one next. Are you sure you don't want to do that? Sometimes I don't, but I need to. I better have a reason that I'm skipping it or putting it out of order or holding on to it. Hmm. So on top of my Elrig deck, you know, my level zeros are out. And then on the top is Madoka 1, 2, 3, Salvage. So when <laughs> I hit main phase throws, it's flip the top card. And then from the bottom are my assists in the order that I want to play them. Um, which is usually... Sanga Aerial, Musica Dolphin, Musica Splits, Sanga Strike. Yep, mm -hmm. that's the same exact order I was using. So, like, when I want to play an assist, I pick up the Elrig deck and look at the bottom card. And if I'm not playing the card that's facing me, I stop and think about why. Hmm. Um, or remember, oh, yeah, I really want to get that done this turn. Uh, and then my second piece just goes in the middle because I don't have another good place for it. I don't know when I'm going to be playing chime or whatever that second piece is at least so far a flex spot that i pull out as i need it's the only one totally. that doesn't have time i definitely want to play it mm -hmm. so when you start the game with this deck mulligan for level ones and i see people i mean it seems basic but having hijikata in turn in hand is juicy and people get greedy uh the mirror did that and got greedy and that's why he only had one card turn one mm -hmm. if you Holding, if you are not holding two level ones that are not servants, 
you are not allowed to keep anything that is not a level one. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. You heard it here first. That's one that's one of the reasons why I actually liked Chime in that deck list that I made was because at worst it's an emergency hand fixing. Because Dolphin doesn't get you there. Mm-hmm. No. No, it doesn't. Unless you well, Dolphin Mills too, so if you really believe in the heart of the cards, it it is. Might- <laughs> I have been burned so much by that dolphin trying to do that. And I was like, no, just, I get it. I have a Hijikata in my hand. I want to enable it turn two. I have to chime right now. <laughs> so yeah, I, hard, the mulligan should be easy. Um, it's hard to do sometimes, but it's straightforward. Uh, toss it. If it's not, unless you're holding two level ones that aren't servants. If your first draw was uh, like, Neon Tetra, Water Buffalo, uh, Hijikata, great. Now you can keep the Hijikata. Mm, yep. Um, but otherwise, toss it. You. It's always bad to miss level one drops. But it's extra bad for this deck. You need to get your filtering going. You need Regelicus or Gagiel coming online to get that self-mill and the draw going. And you need those cards out there so that they get vanished so you have the enter later. Yep, yep, that's exactly what I was thinking when you were talking about the flow. Turn two into turn three is rough on enter, so if you don't get that card down, you're going to regret it later, if only because they don't vanish it. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't regret the damage you're going to regret the, that you take, you're going to regret the missing enter. Turn one, also think about how you're setting up your trash for your eventual... Um, Dolphin. Mm -hmm. If you've got Zirconium Oxide or even Hijikata in hand, they're a great enter play for turn one. Because you're going to Dolphin on turn two. And by then, you will have paid for your turn two grow. So whatever you... Blue Signy that you enter turn one, you can pull back turn two after you pay for your Madoka grow with it. So yeah, if you see a card you really want to keep, but you're like, I can't fit it, I really need that more than this, throw it. It's great. You'll get it back. If it's your best shot. Song get Ariel as early as possible. Mm-hmm. Turn one if you're on the draw, turn two if you're on the play. Assuming you've got a target for it. This deck does not run field clear. You'll probably have a target. This deck doesn't run field clears turn one and two. Uh, there's no Lancelot equivalent. There's no, you're not clearing, you're not opening up lanes very well. You're Lancering. Um, and you want to do it as early as possible so that your opponent can't stop it. Now, now, Bill, I have a question for you because the way I've Lancered with Musica has changed recently uh, as I've gotten a little bit more experienced in the game. I want to ask what you think. If you have an open lane, right? Let's say you're attacking and you've got an open lane and you've got a, a Signy that you just put Lancer on, right? You go into your attack phase. Which one are you attacking with first? The open lane or the Lancer? See, this is, you're reading my mind. That was exactly the next bullet point on my notes. Was to ask you that question. Um, my answer is, if I'm in a Musica deck, I'm attacking with the open lane first. And the reason we're thinking it through the, the order matters uh, as I'm sure you know, but for anybody who's trying to follow us, is if I hit a life burst that blocks the other one, vanishes it, downs it, whatever, um, then in a normal circumstances, you'd rather hit open lane because now you've effectively, at least you haven't given them the enter for the vanished card. You've enter starved a little. So in music, I think the open lane is correct. In this deck... I'm not, I can't enter Star. I'm not trying to. That's not my game plan. I need to lean on my game plan. Mm-hmm. I need to, uh, I do the Lancer first. Mm-hmm. I want to get their cards off the field and force them to play more next turn. I, mm. I love that because I've recently gone from uh, Lancer first because I didn't want to lose the Signy with Lancer to, no, actually, I'd rather enter Star so I'm attacking the open lane. But you're saying it depends on what the flow is that you're trying to accomplish. And that should be what you do. Exactly. I'm trying to ruin their flow at their hand. I don't do that by leaving a card on field. I I want to, uh, you know, remove cards from field, which also with this deck, I strongly prefer 
on enter removal to attack phase removal. I know that's different from what you've done in some of your no limit decks and stuff, which totally makes mm -hmm. sense. Why? Because, you know, you're needing the inner. But I want to remove their Signy. Attack phase removal is dangerous because if I've got attack phase removal, there's a chance that their defensive assist grow removes that card. Mm -hmm. And now, even if I didn't get through that lane with damage, I wanted that Signy off the field. So they have to play a card to fill the spot out of their mm -hmm. hand, which yep. I'm shredding. Got it. Go. Right. So I I have a really quick like clarification question just to circle back really quick. So when you're thinking about this deck and you're thinking about the flow, uh, you said that you're removing signies off of your opponent's field because you're trying to get them to fill it from their hand. Mm -hmm. So in a way, outside of just discarding to shred, you're forcing them to use their hand and removing cards from their hand as a way to build on that. Yeah, it's basically virtual discard. You're making your opponent discard for you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Because against against no limit in particular. Uh, I mean, some opponents like Card Jockey has so much draw and filter, I can't always empty their hand. And even if I do, they're going to refill it if they draw well. Um, but no limit, their hand is usually empty by their turn four or five. And then they're stuck. Because they don't have, mm -hmm. once they play their raise, they have no draw. Other than, unless they aggro. start running Xenoplast Cluster or something, and once they've played their raise, they're done with draw. And if I um, burn out their hand, they are stuck playing two cards, and that's all they get. I kind of like going first with this deck. Um, not that you get to pick that, it's random, but I like going first. A, against Card Jockey, it's fantastic, because you refresh them before they get to Endless Punchline. <sighs> Side. Talk more about that in a moment. I have some tips for card jockey players if you're playing against this sort of thing. But um, if you're going first, turn two, turn on Hijikata and Lancer it. Because if you went first, unless you're playing like um, the only attack phase possible removal is Uchu playing Nova Mute. Unless you're playing Uchu and you think they might have Nova Mute. If you went first, your opponent's got level one Elrigs and they have no answer. So you can do that safely. And it is so demoralizing for your opponent and feels so awesome for you to go, okay, I'm going to remove this Signy blocker. I'm going to discard the card that you would have used to replace it out of your hand. And then after all of that, I'm going to hit you for damage as if the lane was open the whole time anyway. <sighs> Savage. Mm -hmm. It's brutal. And also it means that you can do all of that and get all those effects in, like we just talked about, before they flip their first life cloth. Um, so yeah, if your, your attacks should be anything that vanishes a Signy without doing damage first, because we want to vanish Signy. Um, down, I mean, to dodge life burst effects, if you've got something that's going to bounce off of a wall, like you're attacking under, then do that to down it. But try not to do that, because you'd much rather vanish. Even if you're just vanishing in the um, attack phase, some decks don't mind attacking under, because mm -hmm. you're, you know, you've still got the lane filled, you didn't need to get that card off their field, you're just sort of chump blocking, to use the old magic term. I don't like to do that if I can avoid it. I want to vanish all their Signy every turn, even if it's just in the battle phase. And often turn two, I'm not doing any damage except the Lancer. Um, but I'm, oh, well, if I went first, then they've got an open lane. But I'm vanishing Signy off their field. Um, then do your Lancers, then open lanes last. Mm -hmm. um, so turn two also. On turn two, do music a dolphin. You need to do music a dolphin turn two. Because in a moment, we're going to use splits for defense. And we need to be able to do that because we want to once per game Sangha Ariel on turn three to get our Lancer back. And turn, which means we can't grow Sangha Strike before turn three. Because that'll cover up the Lancer, and then you can't... The, the Song 
aerial because you Lancer, and then you can't return it with Madoka's once per game. And we, you don't want to go into turn three with limit six. It's rough with this deck if you end up limit six turn three. Because you want to play, we'll get into it in a moment, but you want to play level threes. There's a line of play where maybe if your opponent still has hand, a decent hand, and you've got multiple Hijikatas in hand that you're going to turn on and use for turn three, maybe you're okay going into it with limit six. But most of the time, you've got to play Dolphin turn two. Even if I had a game where Dolphin only got me one card. Yep. Because I didn't have the, the mixed color requirements out of my trash. You are, you I, are preaching to the choir here. Every time, no I, every time I don't Dolphin on turn two, or turn one, I'm like, no, sorry, not turn one, turn two, excuse me, where you have valid targets because you've paid for some cost with your enter and you, that's one target. Um, I have gone, oh, I wish I could splits here. I can't. I guess I'm going to be forced into doing Sanga level two, and then I miss on the Lancer, and it just messes the absolute flow out of it. Exactly. Um, so yeah, you're gonna Dolphin. For your Dolphin picks, you're probably, if you don't need hand fixing for turn two, which sometimes you do, um, and if you don't have two good targets, you could always pray to the heart of the cards that Dolphin's Mill 2 gets you what you needed. <laughs> um, and it, one of my games, I pulled Dark Energy that I pulled off the mill, and the Hijikata that I needed, and I Dolphin for the Hijikata, even though I could have maybe done some other things first, I needed that Hijikata um, for turn two. So... Yeah, turn two, you dolphin, you're setting your... If you don't need it for turn two, you're setting yourself up for turn three. If you've got a landling in the trash now, pull it, if you don't need it. Landling is great turn three. Mm -hmm. um, and turn four, for that matter. But landling's fantastic for this deck. Uh, it feel You can totally feel okay discarding it off of, like, Gagiel or Regalicus or Chime if you're going to go pull it back out with music of dolphin. And that gives you your off-color to the Zirconium or the um, Hijikata we talked about earlier. Uh, and, yeah, attack hand, shred their deck if you can with the Hijikatas. So then you move into your turn two defense. You're after turn two, they're attacking you, right? And now is when you music a splits. All the things we just talked about. You've got to have that limit going into turn three. Also... Sangha Strikes Vanish is unconditional. Musica Splits is giving minus power. So later, if you Musica Splits later, it might be bad. Because they might have walled. If they've got like a Kiyasumi in center and then some 12k level 3s because they limited out and so they're playing 3-2-3 three, three for their Signy levels, then Musica Splits has to pay for the full effect to get rid of one card. And it's bad. So you want a music of splits now. Um, you've said, and I totally agree, most games you are only going to get the bonus effect off of either splits or strike, not both. You just can't afford the enter for both. If you can, without messing up your level three Madoka grow, pay for music of splits. Because... Right now, it's minus music of splits is minus 10k for its main effect, which only costs one enter. So you ought to be able to do that now. You ought to find a target. You vanish, you prevent a damage, you also open up a lane for your own attacks. Right now, the minus 8k, which is what costs like four enter, one of which has to be black as its secondary effect, might find a good target. Mm -hmm. And that not only blocks a damage, assuming they cleared enough of your field, but it opens up a lane for you to attack through and gives you a damage. Songi's mm -hmm. secondary effect does not give you damage. It only gives you defense. So unless Songa's secondary effect is blocking a double crush, um, then Musica's secondary effect is the better one to get off if you can find a target for it. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't care about vanishing it uh, to give them enter because, um, you know, you're not enter starving them anyway. Makes sense. Uh, now, I will say one reason to distort this whole plan that I've said is 
if you ever see the opportunity to line up Sangha Strike's defense so that you block No Limits Glory Grow with it, do it. They will cry. It will ruin their game. You will win. Even if it means skipping your once per game Lancer, you will win. It's awesome. Yep. That's true. Yeah. I, I didn't even think of I that. I will say that as, as I've played a lot of No Limit prior to this event and during this event, whenever I tested against Musica or Madoka, one of my goals was to force the 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 early Sangha. Like, you just go, you, you force it in there. You go, like, look, I know you have a once-a-game ability that allow you to pop this back to your hand, but if I can force this early, and because I'm, I'm putting serious damage, serious pressure on you, then it'll be more advantageous for me. Now, the smarter players that I've played against resist the urge to do it anyways, and go, no, I'm not falling for this. I can I can get more of this effect a little later. I'm just going to hold off, even though it's scary that you're coming at me with four damage here. And by the way, all of this playing music of splits, this is also the moment where you need to check whether you need to play Dolphin, because you're about to cover it. If you need to once per game Dolphin. Rarely is that the right move. That is not plan A. But I did it once during the ceremony. Uh, it was that Madoka mirror where he shredded my hand. I said, I don't need the Lancer. I need to fill lanes or the Lancer doesn't do anything for me. Um, and so I switched the plan and I once per gamed Dolphin and I Dolphined twice. Hmm. But this is the moment in turn two defense is the moment where you need to look at what your opponent's doing in your hand and check what you're going to once per game in turn three. Hmm. The other thing about turn two defense, probably don't guard. You have, a, we talked about the flow. Besides the natural flow that I just mentioned, uh, that I mentioned earlier, where it's deck to hand to field to enter to trash to deck. There's cards that like skip that or move between that. But you've also got like a reserve tank and that's your life cloth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your life cloth is is a resource. It's the same resource as everything else in the game. It's all cards. And life cloth that is sitting there is a resource that is not helping you win. Yep. It is helping you not lose, but it's not helping you win. Hmm. Yeah, I think we talked about that in the latest uh, podcast where we said, I, as a No Limit player, I would rather win the game with zero life cloth on my side of the field than one life cloth. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Um, I think my finals match I won with zero life cloth. If it wasn't that, it was one of the others. I won several games, with, a couple of games with zero life cloth at the ceremony. Um, yeah, it doesn't do you any good there. But if it's entered to pay for your turn three zirconiums and your landlings and your osagatsunes when you need them, or your sangha after turn three to get sangha's extra effect off to save you, um, that may be an extra damage you prevented by letting it, taking it now. Um, then it's useful. And if it life bursts, bonus points. And I'm yeah, assuming totally. based off of what you were saying with your limit being very important, having a one, one, a level one signet in your hand is not irrelevant when you're trying to also play a level three and a level three on your next turn. Totally correct. Yeah. Uh, and the reason, yeah, six limit is so rough is because you might still, you want a Lancer target turn three also. You don't just need a level one or a level two for limit reasons. You need it because Sangha can't Lancer level three. Mm -hmm. So you need a level one or two that can take out one of theirs. So this is where Servant doesn't necessarily do that for you. But the card draws off of like a lot of the life bursts in this deck might give it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, this is ahead a little bit, but turn three, you're going to be running either 3-1-3 three, three, or you're going to be running 3-2-2. Two, two. So, um, I usually don't guard. Now, the, a couple of things on that. As you'd mentioned, it's good to have a guard in trash. Because if you flip a servant off of your life cloth, this is the only trash recursion in this deck, is servants off of life cloth. Mm -hmm. So it's not common. But if you flip one, you might want to be able to pull that servant out of your trash. Mm -hmm. um, the other reason that you might not want the servant in your hand is if you are 
afraid you're going to draw multiple servants that you want to guard with and then not have the opportunity to use them. Otherwise, uh, if this card is going to save me a damage just as well later as it does now, I would rather take the damage now because that gets the enter into my, out earlier for me to use. And it's like compound interest. The earlier you have the enter to use, the better it's going to do for you. Yeah, I will say maybe the one caveat to that, and that's you have not played a ton of Uchu. But when Uchu is going to turn around, you're like, all right, I'm going to lose this guard anyways. Toss it, you know, use it. Oh, yeah, yeah. If there's any reason you think you won't be able to guard later, use it now. Uh, if the opponent's discarding you um, and you're not trying to play it to field, because we talked about how that can be more valuable, but if you're going to use it, lose it before you can play it to field, yeah, totally guard. Respect MC Lions once a game. Respect. Don't, don't hold the guard for turn four. It will not help you. Yep. I've lost a local game at locals that way, or messed it up anyway. Um, and if you're going to end up holding multiple, on the one hand, card jockey will give you the opportunity to use multiple guards at once with endless punchline, but on the other hand, they might have PRJ map on the field. Yep. And and as we've learned recently, they might have two. Like that's the you might you might have the one, and then you're like, oh, that's fine. I've got the Senga. No, they might have two out, and you go, all right, well, I'm screwed. Double projection map, yes. Uh, and I am now for that note specifically. I'll say I'm not worried about being able to use one guard against endless punchline because they can't. I can always use one because they can't put two. Um, they can't put more than two PRJ maps in the field. And that's usually the turn, um, again, get to this in a moment, but that I'm using Sangha Strike and I'm going to remove one of them. Mm -hmm. Even if I had no enter, Endless Punchline is not three damage all at once. It's three discrete attacks. So even if they have a PRJ map on the field, they can't have two if I Sangha Striked and took one of them. Um, then the first and second attack will give me the life cloth, the, excuse me, the enter off of my life cloth to guard the third. Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried about being able to use one guard against Endless Punchline, but if I think I might need to use two, I need to start thinking about guarding turn two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the turn two defense. Then we get into turn three. Grow Madoka. Don't forget to pay for it. <laughs> um, for, do her enter effect. Um... Play Salvage the Future. Every and Salvage the Future technically has a second effect that is pull things out of trash. I have used it once in a long while on a Musica deck. I don't think I've ever used it on this deck. Mm -hmm. Now here is a big, big tip I think for diagram players of all stripes. I firmly believe. Every diagram player should know how to count to 13. <laughs> Why is that? 13. It is critical. The main deck starts with 40 cards in it. At mm. the start of the game, five cards are in the opponent's hand and seven are in life cloth. That leaves 28 cards. Mm -hmm. Salvage the future, mills 15. And there is no way in the game currently to stop it. There's nothing they can do. There's no peace cancel in the game right now. Salvage is a guaranteed mill 15 if you can play it, provided they didn't freeze your down level 2 L-Rig. But, that you know... does happen. If, if you <laughs> get it... Yeah, if you get it, um, it's guaranteed mill 15. That leaves 13 cards that need to come out of their deck before they refresh. Mm. If you so you're watch, saying is you don't need to watch the deck, you just need to watch how many cards get drawn. Yeah, and it's much easier to do that. Um, in fact, if you watch my uh, featured games, I have up at the top of my enter zone near where my opponent's deck is on my camera, on my screen, I have a little black D20. And it's not a standard D20. There's something magic players use called a countdown die, where the 20 is next to the 19, is next to the 18, is next to the mm -hmm. 17, which is not how you want a normal die to be for rolling. They'd said in the judge's clarification for this event that you couldn't take written notes. They didn't want people writing down during matches. But that dies and counters to track things that you wanted to track were okay. 
And what I'm doing with that die, you'll see me fiddle with it time to time. It starts at one, which is my opponent's first draw, whatever that is. And then every time they take a card from the deck, I count it up. Hmm. If when they draw for their turn, when they have an inner charge effect, hmm. when I count up. When they, if they mill, I count up. If uh, they good dig, as they find both cards, I find I count up two. If they only find one, I'm counting up one. If they honey L, I'm counting. Every diagram player should count to 13. Once you count to 13, Salvage of Future is a guaranteed refresh. Mm -hmm. 12 means it's a guaranteed refresh on their draw phase. Mm -hmm. And then minus five, both of those, if you can get Landling in. So this is where you look at your count. Where's your count at? Do I need to stick a Landling to force the refresh? Are, is my count at eight? Mm -hmm. Or seven? to force the draw phase refresh, and also denying them a draw, which is really juicy if you can do it. Um, where's my count? If I, if it's at like seven, eight, I'm putting it down lane lane. If I'm scared about um, them removing the lane lane and staying alive and going a whole nother turn without refreshing, um, and I have them in hand, I may well double lane lane. Mm. Yep, this is when I'd be 313. So that even if they remove one, I'm still forcing their refresh. Mm -hmm. That's something that I'm actually active when I was testing as No Limit, was constantly checking to see where my deck would be if they did something. So when I would see a Langling, or or a better option here, Volaris, for example, uh, on the other side, that could uh, attack one of my... Um, one of my Signy vanish it, and then it would cause the disc, the 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 mill effect. One of the things that I would do is I would actually take the life cloth damage on the open lane, and I would get rid of the Phalaris, because then I at least I'm not refreshing, and at least I get first off enter, second off an effect off of my my crush, and then I would end the turn with what, three cards in my deck. Great, I would just draw those two of those cards, and the refresh won't matter because I'm no limit by the time I'm, I get to my next turn where I will refresh. I have no life cloth, so it doesn't matter anymore. Exactly. Uh, trashing a life cloth is so powerful. You're not only enter denying, which doesn't matter as much as this deck with this deck, but you're life burst denying. But you got to do it while they still have life cloth. So refreshing as early as possible. Um, even that mirror, the Madoka mirror, where he shredded my hand, I still used Salvage the Future. And I needed to, uh, as Mill. And I needed to in that, not just for the damage from the refresh, but it uh, dumped his trash back into deck and kept his landlings from turning on from 20 mm. in trash. Gotcha. Which would have been much worse removal for me. He did the exact same thing to me. Um, that was <laughs> Fair a, is a, fair. A, yeah, exactly. So yeah, count to 13. Uh, make the opponent discard some way or another to get your Madoka once per turn and because you want to. Because um, that's what we do. You can... Zirconium Oxide, if you've got the space for it, you can... Uh, random Drain is good here. Now, is better. The first discard of the turn is extra good because of Madoka's once a game. Or once mm -hmm. a turn, excuse me. Once per turn effect. Um, once per game, Sangha Aerial. Um, get your Lancer in there. If you can. I have had in one games where I ended up skipping the once per game. Because I had successfully taken out two targets with music as splits. And I took out the third with a Landling or a Dark Energy or something. And I had no targets for Lancer. And it became worth it more to keep growing and grow into Sangha Strike. Both for defense and because eight is a better limit than seven. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a target, Lancering twice is good. I mean, it just mm -hmm. is. That is actually the main reason I didn't run Uchu in this tournament was because I kept playing. I was successfully resource denying, but I had no way to punch through. And every time I played Musica I I or Madoka, I would go, damn, just two Lancer. I look at the end of my Uchu games and I'd say, how, how much off was I am from killing them before I lost? And it was always two. It was just one life cloth and the damage. And I was like, yep, that's where the math goes. The two Lancer matters. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, 
And also it's vanishing an opponent's card, which by this time is starting to get really important because their hand's kind of empty. Um, I, yeah. It's good stuff. So if you've got it, do it. And do your, force the refresh. Turn three defense. Song of Strike. Song of Strike is your only non-conditional removal in the deck. Everything else is either minus power, or it's a Sagatsune, which needs some turn on and is attack phase. So if you see something on deck like an Arc Gwyn is prime, that you're going to have trouble getting rid of. Get rid of it now. Depending on where your life cloth is, if you're going to force their hand empty, you can even prioritize that over open lanes if you've got life cloth to spare. Mm -hmm. If it helps force empty their hands and makes them leave lanes open later, that's damage you saved later. If you're going to live that long, now if you're you know low on life cloth, then by all means, clear the open lane. Don't be stupid. But um, you, this is your one chance to say any card you want is off the field. Mm -hmm. uh, usually to pay for the same effect. If you can, great. Uh, cool. Go for it. Again, if you can somehow line that up against Glory Grow, you're, you're set. Do that. Um, so hopefully you live through turn three defense, because, I mean, Song of Strike's good, and by now you're probably guarding, because mm -hmm. your life is probably low. Turn four plus if they've got anything left, discard them down, if you possibly can. Uh, you can start using the ones per turn off of Madoka. By turn four, you've got a good chance of having 20 cards in your trash, and Landling's now doing minus 10k, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. One enter to, to uh, minus 10k is pretty good. Because uh, the filter, like we said, is like self-mill. Watch out for your own refresh. Mm -hmm. um, and either avoid it, or if you can't avoid it, time it so it doesn't screw up your draw or happens when you're at zero life cloth or something like that if you can. Um, Osagatsune is much better once their Elric deck is empty. Because now all the issues I said before with attack phase timing don't care. Because they can't mm -hmm. stop your attack phase removal from happening. Um and win. And yay! <laughs> I, let me let me ask you one other thing because it's rare that games get past turn four right now. Mm -hmm. I think they will later as the meta slows, but right now they have they have a hard time getting past turn four. Um, but that is one of those ones where Black uh, Signy does show its effectiveness. I think because th what they do is they give negative. They don't. They're not outright vanish like red. So. You're getting enough cards, especially with the um, the ability to draw a discard to filter. That you should be able to be like, all right, that thing on board's 15. That's fine. I have a dark energy and a, a langling. Together, though, that's negative 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, you get, and this happens to me sometimes, you start getting so locked in on, okay, I'm using that negative for removal. If that negative means that I turned a 12k into a 10k and now my imp my 5k is vanishing it okay that's another lane they have to fill out of hand that's a card i wasn't going to again attacking hand by flowing forcing cards out of the next stage of the flow that's another lane open that's another emergency way to get your lancer online mm -hmm. turn three um is you can if if the only thing that survived into your turn three is a 12k, you've got a line of play that says, okay, put um, minus 5k on it somehow, play out the rest of my thing, and put like um, a Gagiel or a Hijikata opposite it, and Lancer that, mm -hmm. and combo it. Don't forget that the negative enables vanishes you couldn't otherwise do. It's not what you want to be doing. You want to be vanishing. But if you can't do that... Mm -hmm then you can enable some combat vanishes that can help you. Gotcha. 100%. Um, All right. Tips any, other, for, yeah, any other tips that you got? Yeah, so tips for people playing against this game. And then I've got thoughts on newer competitive players that uh, you'd potentially ask for. Sure. 
if people are playing against this deck, this is I haven't played against this deck much because the only Madoka I ran into was a different package. But from playing it, uh, Xeno Cluster might be good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we talked about that a bit earlier. If you're no limit, watch your hand. Think strongly about entering Deafening Inferno or maybe Nobunaga. Rose Quartz is great for you. Rose Quartz is probably your MVP if you're no limit against this deck. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you need, you'll need to open up lanes late without using extra cards, because you won't have them. Mm -hmm. um, if you're card jockey, uh, first tip would be... Yeah, if you're card She's jockey... Got her notes first, out, by the way. I'm taking notes. My first tip would be go first. <laughs> Okay, I'll 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 just do that. Yeah, win win <laughs> win that dice roll, please. If you go first, endless punchline on turn three. My other card jockey player that wasn't the finals game went first, and I went like, "Oh, this is going to be a interesting back and forth kind of rough matchup for me. I got to watch out for that endless, and I'm not going to force refresh before." He waited till turn four because he wanted to filter a bit more, and I forced the refresh. And he was like, man, I just have a bad matchup against Diagram players. And I was telling him afterwards, listen, if you're first against Diagram, don't wait. I, I have said it before, and I'll say it again. Uh, Diagram, it's not a, necessarily a bad matchup. It's it's a 50-50 matchup. And the reason is because if you go first, that matters a lot. Yeah, that's going to be... That's going to be it. Ooh. Now, if this is another one where I feel like... Um, there were misplays by my opponent in the finals game because they weren't used to playing this sort of deck. Mm -hmm. If you card jockey and you go second, don't try to avoid the refresh. Mm -hmm. Plan for it. Because you cannot avoid the refresh. I'm counting to 13. You're going to draw, if you're going a second, you're going to draw two on your first turn. You're going to draw two on your second turn. You're going to draw two on your third turn. And MC Lion is going to force you to search four. And now my count's at 10. Mm -hmm. If you draw even three cards off of anything, Good Dig, Arc Gwen, Taniel, anything, which is what your deck does, right? You're, you're drawing and filtering and stuff. If you even draw three cards, my salvage is a guaranteed refresh. Because if you don't draw anything, A, you can't control that because life bursts. But B, you are ditching your entire game plan and what your deck is good at. And I'm going to empty your hand. And even if you get the endless punchline, you're still going to lose because you had no cards for a couple of turns. Um, instead, plan for it. How do you plan for it? Ideally. Go ahead, lean into your draws. Make the refresh happen when I salvage. Because if you do that, then for turn three, you're going to get two interrupted draws. You're going to get to do MC Lion's effect safely. And then you spend your turn three filtering. Turn three is a great time to start doing your good digs. Well, it, to any extent you haven't already. You can do your good digs. You can do all your filtering to set up your endless punchline as well as you can. Also, yeah, don't mess up your draws. The worst place for me to end up with my counter when I hit salvage is like 10. Because if I'm on 10 and I salvage, you're going to draw two for your turn, and then MC Lion's going to force you to look at four, and you're going to look at one, and you're going to be sad. Mm -hmm. This is like exactly what happened to my opponent in the finals. Um, so you want to re draw enough that you force your refresh to happen during my salvage. And the other way you can plan for it is leave your level ones in enter. If you're paying for stuff, nothing cares about whether you paid for it with a level one or a level three. Unless there's some real reason you need that level one in your trash, leave them in enter. And then they won't go back. That's the filtering that survives the refresh. Is anything you put over and enter won't go back into your deck. Don't pay for your MC Lion Grow with Haniel when Arc Gwen is sitting in your enter zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so you won't be perfect, but as well as you would like, but you can you can stack your endless punchline more than you think. Because you've got your enter zone as filter, and then you've got all of turn three with all of your effects going off to try to um, filter as much as possible. Yeah, and, and as you said before, that you, you said you're primed for that second refresh because the deck is a lot less thicker after the first refresh. If you control what goes back into that deck, you can still control your endless punchline to an extent. It's all about that flow. Now, flow all of that man. said, both card jockey players that I played flipped to level one. In fact, it was a Xiao Yun both times off of their endless punchline. Yeah, that's sad. In the, if it helps you feel better in the finals, you can see that it does not matter because they, uh, I had the life cloth that they could have flipped a three and I'd have been fine. And mm -hmm. um, I had ser also had servant in hand anyway. Uh, but it still feels rough, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but yeah, you can control it more than you think you can. If you play, if you know you're going to refresh and you've changed your whole, you adapt your whole strategy to, okay, I'm refreshing on their turn three. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you still rather not refresh? Sure. <laughs> uh, and I'm a fool if I don't salvage on my turn three. In that case, mm -hmm. go ahead and do your endless punchline happily, but um, plan for it. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, get something to play with and play some to learn. Step one. Step two, pick a, or build a deck that suits you and that you love. Step three, learn it. Mm -hmm. And then it, and you'll be a pretty good player at that point. If you do that and your deck is reasonable, then be a pretty good player already. And then step four is play against as many different things as you can have time for an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Each and then step time. five... Subscribe to the Life Burst podcast so you can learn more about uh, We Cross. I, uh, both step three and four, actually, uh, learning your deck and learning others. If you can't play against it at locals or again on online, second best thing is to consume media talking about the deck. Mm -hmm. Life Burst podcast, too. the stream from the ceremony. Um, there's several people with replays online. They're not often the, always the best commentated, so look for the ones that like comment on what's going on or people who like do voiceover for their own stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you don't understand what's going on, watching it does the replay doesn't help you any. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But if you have media that ex or articles or whatever that explains to you what's going on, um, and you can watch it, that's not as good as playing it yourself. The lessons won't stick as well, but it's the second best thing. And um, then play, have fun, enjoy the game, win or lose, mm -hmm. and always flip a life burst. That's it. That's how we're ending it. Woo! Woo!